If you are an aspiring artist, you've no doubt seen and heard people talk about head construction systems, ways that we can draw the head from any angle using the principles of structure and sequence and solid drawing. What I want to talk about in this video is how you can do the exact same thing even when you are creating very, very cartoony, simplified designs and characters and how that can be the key to drawing those same characters from any angle if you want to use them for comic books or other projects. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I designed and created and systemized the way that I draw little Pinocchio here from the 2014 adaptation of Pinocchio that I did with David Chevelle. Let's get started. Okay, let's get started. So if we were to construct a figure or a face using a head construction method like this, it would go thusly. We start with a sphere, we find dimensionality within the sphere, we then draw a line down from what we are defining as the center of the forehead or between the eyes, and then we get proportional markers from that and then we construct the rest of the facial features from that proportion. And this allows us to nicely be able to control proportion and manipulate that proportion from different angles. If this is something that you're interested in and maybe you've tried it and you're struggling, check out my free mini workshop that covers the top five mistakes that aspiring artists tend to make when they are head constructing and trying to draw heads and faces. Link for that is in the description. If we look at how to do this for a cartoon character, it's actually pretty simple though. We do a very, very similar thing. We take a sphere, we define dimensionality within the sphere and we find just a few different markers. In Pinocchio's case, the marker for where the middle of the eyes are and the nose is kind of the same and it's a little bit lower down on the face, but it is the same basic idea. And that's really what I wanna talk about in this video. Okay, so how do we actually go about applying those same ideas when we've got a cartoony design? Well, the first thing is to translate your sketch or whatever initial idea you have and try and figure out how the proportions there match up and line up with each other. So one of the things that I sort of noticed when I sort of initially drew Pinocchio is that unlike a standard sort of head where we have the eyes sort of in a constructive sort of anatomy sense, right? The eyes are normally sort of sitting here about halfway up that sphere, All right? So if we were to draw, again, something a little bit more cartoony like that, with Pinocchio, his eyes are not there and he doesn't really have a jaw. His, his head is just this sort of sphere. But the important thing that really makes a difference is where his nose is placed on the sphere. So again, his nose is, instead of it being sort of halfway up, right, his is about right, one third of the way down. So if we just sort of take this and again, roughly sort of divide it into three, you can see the line of his sort of eyes and his nose is about on that sort of one, two, three line. And so these are things that again, I noticed as I was sort of designing him and I noticed that these things tended to be the things that were giving him the feel that I wanted from the character. So once we do that, it's just a matter of in your head thinking about where those features are and how you can sort of construct them that way. Now, other things that are sort of important are his little hat and his ears. And his ears, I found it was better if they sort of stayed within that same line of his head, right? So it's not like they popped out a lot. And there's this nice sort of line that his
little beanie thing hat creates right where this line sort of goes that way and this line sort of goes that way and they kind of collide and create this little nice shape and obviously his mouth sort of has to fit somewhere in here so again that is the sort of two-dimensional design from the side that I found really sort of helped me to nail the character and get him looking sort of consistent. Again, that was based on an initial drawing I did. And so then what we do is we take the same concepts that you would learn from drawing the normal head using the Loomis method or another constructive anatomy method, and we just apply it here. Now, using this again gives us a lot of control because it allows me to remember where the the, the, the features are in relation to each other and that allows me also to control the way that the head looks when it's viewed from different angles. So if I think about again just generally finding geometry within our sort of sphere and again finding geometry within the sphere like this is, is a really good sort of generic drawing exercise you can do because uh, Again, a circle doesn't have much dimensionality, right? We need to sort of, again, find sort of contours around that to kind of help us draw. And once I've sort of got that, again, the same sort of halfway up divided sphere there, I just sort of say, you know what? I'm, I need to place my, um, my line a little bit further, right? Let's do the same thing. We'll be looking down, down here, and we'll be looking up at this one. Right, so again, I find that dimensionality and I just need to find, again, for here, it really doesn't matter exactly, you know, for me to find the dimensionality there. I just need to find where that center of his head is going to be. Right, if we were to view it from the front, again, I've still got, right, one, two, three. And he's got his nose there eyes there and again his mouth is here something like that so it's the same thing here I just need to find this point and then we can draw our line out a big part of constructive anatomy that is often missing from the general sort of step-by-step -step guides is just trying to understand in your mind through studying uh, perspective and a lot of these basic form drawing exercises, the relationship between a sort of your imaginary box and your sort of subject that you're drawing, right? So a big part here that I'm sort of visualizing is not just where this point is in space, but also where we might imagine you know, either a plane is being drawn in front of his face or the box around the face. Again, as I said, these are often things that can feel intimidating if we're looking at learning constructive anatomy this way. But when I'm actually applying it, I'm not really doing a lot of that. I'm, I'm just visualizing these things in my mind and, and really thinking about um, the Pinocchio character. So again, the way we explain it and the way we learn it is not always the way that we practice it. But nevertheless, again, I'm thinking about that nose coming out in a similar direction. And the same thing here, right? We can sort of imagine the dimensionality there and that the nose is going to come out at a similar angle. So just a matter of defining some basic structure after that. Find out, think about where that connects to the face. Make sure again that that connects at the center of the face between these eyes. And then we're basically just connecting the dots. Again, I can think about where that mouth is going to go. Right. It's going to line up because I sort of want it to be 
at the very least sort of symmetrical. So if I draw those lines down across the eyes, that gives me a good little guide guidepost to put it in. Now again, I sort of think about where his little hat is wrapping around the form there. And this is another one of those things where I'm just roughly visualizing how that's sort of wrapping around the head. Again, the more that you practice this, the more that you will be able to only put in strongly the lines that sort of need to be put in. A big sort of technique that gets used here is that we are often sort of tracing in the air the circle or whatever we sort of want to put in. And then we kind of just put in the mark that we want, right? And then we lift. So we're still sort of thinking about the dimensionality of those other lines that are being drawn through, right? The draw through just means that we draw the ones that sort of go behind the object. So we're drawing through and we're creating lines that help us with structure, but they're not necessarily the lines we're gonna see. And then I'm gonna combine again, this sort of concept of this two dimensional shape, which this is where it gets tricky because we could sort of go down the rabbit hole and try and sort of structurally position this point in space. And this is where what I do is I start to combine the structure that I've got here and also my desire to optimize the two dimensional shape design that is inherent as part of my character. So again, applying this is a matter of understanding how these things will help you when you're drawing cartoony stuff and when you need to think about like what looks cool. So the structure allows me to place the features uh, relative to each other in a good way that's consistent. And again, I can you know also put in those sort of ears somewhere here. Let's trace where that ear might be over there. Just roughly put that in. And yeah, I'm gonna have Again, a line that sort of comes off here, and then a line that kind of comes off here. But I'm, I'm gonna sort of, again, just try and make sure that I've got that nice little shape. So you can see, this doesn't make sense in three dimensions that much, right? This is just me sort of messing around, but this is a really nice shape. And I'm not gonna worry too much about whether this is in three dimensions. It's important that his nose is in three dimensions and his eyes are in three dimensions, but it's it's more important that this design here is, is based on, again, that sort of combination of these, right? These shapes kind of crossing over. So that's where learning this stuff and really understanding it will help you because if you understand this really well, you, you don't feel quite as trapped here, right? I, I know that a lot of students get tripped up about this because they, they, they're trying to sort of construct everything. We use these to help us draw. They, they don't need to control us, right? We're in control. We're using them when we need them. So hopefully you can see there how that sort of functions. We've got that sort of um, structure and we use that to find the proportional markers that we want. And then again, as we as we need, we can apply interesting shape design on top of that. There's a couple of other things that are worth mentioning. Uh, the main one is just that I would always try and make sure his nose kind of sticks outside his face by a nice sort of length. And really that that is just a matter again of optimizing that nice shape design. So there's probably an angle, right, that I would potentially draw his face at where maybe the nose, you know, if, if we were to sort of draw it properly, where his nose might actually, if it was in truly in perspective, right, might hit, you know, just at the edge of his face, like it might just sort of fit there. All right, bam, bam. And what I would always do is prioritize the good shape design and good tangents when we're designing these cartoony characters. Because I can't always just say, you know what, maybe his nose is just a little bit longer, right? Or I can make it a tiny bit shorter. I'm gonna optimize what looks good and what feels appealing, but I'm gonna use the structure to allow me to place the character in three dimensions where I need. 
So hopefully that gives you an idea of how I use these kind of techniques. Again, these ideas of um, constructing and creating um, anatomical models and, and mannequins and all those things that sound super technical and super, super boring. Um, they sounded technical and super boring to me when I was sort of learning to draw. Um, it is a matter of understanding structure and sequence. So structure is what allows us to find the forms in three dimension. The sequence is what allows us to easily position those sort of features in space in, in a very sort of effective way. And that really is where those Loomis methods and those other drawing systems come in handy. They give us hints for that. And again, once you get used to that, you find you, you sort of tend to draw that way. And that again, helps us out a lot. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. If you want help constructing and drawing heads, and this is something that you're struggling with, check out my mini workshop, link in the description, where I cover the top five mistakes that I find aspiring artists make when they're drawing heads and how you can fix them. Happy drawing. See you around.